day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody getting along? We're going to see if Invest 99L here. Yep, yeah, it is an Invest system now. We'll see if it has any chance of developing into any storm during the next two to four days. NHC has about a 30% chance. You know, and as we go forward further into the month of August, we're going to explore this tropical wave that starts to develop here into the Caribbean. You see this big old mess here by Thursday, August 25th. Will this affect the Gulf of Mexico? Well, we'll explain the entire big old blob by the 27th of August. Is this going to be our next big feature? We'll get into the whole tropics and your forecast for North America and see if the heat is going to return to the east. Let's get into it in this segment. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got here with Invest 99L. Take a look at this. So it's exiting, you know, Friday morning, early morning, it's exiting into the Gulf of Mexico, getting away from the Yucatan. Whatever this becomes, it's not going to be much. There will be some flare-ups of showers and thunderstorms. NHC still has it at a 30% chance. It's going to come up near the coastline just like this. So whatever it is at this point. It's not going to be a whole lot, and it doesn't have a lot of moisture either at this point. So it's kind of, by Sunday morning, you can see there's not much left of this system. And as we go out into the Atlantic, let's take a look and see what we got going on here. The Cape Verde Islands, we got this next system, but you know what? I'm not overly impressed because watch what happens with it here. It ingests some dry air, some wind shear, some dust, and there it is. It's pretty much toast at this point, so... As we continue in time here, take a look at this. We'll see what the overall pattern. There is a few things I want to show you here. Take a look at this. This is right around the 25th, 25th, here it is, of August. Look at this. This is right around, you can see Jamaica right here. This is that tropical wave that the GFS has really been picking up on here. Take a look at that. And as we go in time here, you can see how the system tries to make a run now, at the beginning of the segment, I showed you the 12Z GFS. Now, this is the 18Z. It's a little bit weaker with the system and further west. So let's just back that up just a little bit. You can see I wanted to show you the prominence here during the day of the frontal boundary. So you have a frontal boundary up here into the northern gulf. So as we go throughout time, let's see how these two entities interact. You see the GFS kind of plows this much weaker and further west into the Yucatan. So the poor Yucatan here is continuing to get deluged with rainfall here, but not much to be had here into the Gulf. We have a few stalled out frontal boundaries, showers and thunderstorms. Here's another tropical wave entering the Caribbean. You can see Jamaica getting some more showers and thunderstorms, but I'm going to draw your attention to this system right here. This is also most likely being picked up on the Euro, and I'm going to show you that momentarily. Let's take a look. As we go through time, this system becomes much more potent. You can see here just east of the Lesser Antilles, this system is looking like it could potentially become a hurricane. And I'll show you that on the Euro here momentarily as well. As we go throughout time, here it is, August 31st. Yep, there it is. It's an eye. So, this is what we're going to be looking at here for the potential for the east coast here um in time we'll see if this has any impact whether it's the east coast the gulf the caribbean islands this is definitely going to be something to watch here take a look at that that's a pretty powerful looking system there on the last frame friday september 2nd knocking on your door to labor day weekend all right let's take a look at the euro side of the atlantic here take a look at this so here's the intertropical convergence zone and here is, you can barely see it on the Euro, Invest 97L. So as we go in time, let's see what happens there. Brings it up, you know, this is Saturday, Saturday morning. So there it is. Very similar to the GFS. This system out here is much more potent on the Euro here. And here's the high the two high pressure systems. We have a, a very close a high pressure system that's really going to start pumping up the heat across the east coast and i'm going to talk about that later on here in the video so stay tuned for that but as we continue throughout time here you can see look at this so we get across the caribbean here and into the atlantic so we have a lot of tropical moisture out this is uh debatable whether this is still left over from invest 99l there's definitely a frontal boundary in there and we start to have the makings of some kind of system here 
into the Caribbean. So let's see what the euro does with it here. There it is. This is uh, Thursday, August 25th. You can see a pretty bona fide system here and then another system coming off the Cape Verdes here. And look at the golf here. Now, this is pretty much a frontal boundary, but these frontal boundaries this time of year, you really have to watch this. And look at this high-pressure system. This is key because any system that forms is going to literally be trajected into the Gulf of Mexico here. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. And the, the Euro continues to hint that there's something, you know, in this region of Cuba uh, as we continue in time here. So let's take a look, just go out a little bit farther. The Euro is definitely unsettled there. And there, look at this. We have agreement here. This is that system that the GFS was picking up on, and the Euro is finally agreeing here. So look at that. We have agreement. And as we go in time here, look at this. The Gulf of Mexico remains unsettled. This system is going to definitely looking like a player here out in the Atlantic. And as we go to the last frame, Wednesday, August 31st, look at this. System definitely pretty, pretty much if this verifies a tropical storm and then look at this big wave coming off the coast. Another disturbance here and then the one into the western Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, and look at this. High pressure squunched up all the way up here retreating. So this might open the door for East Coast systems as well. All right, so as we take a look at the Pacific here, is there anything to worry about? Well, I told you the Eastern Pacific was going to get quiet. And look at this. Through about the 25th of August. It's mostly quiet. You might have this system out here. It's not going to be of any. Look how far away for it is away from the resort towns of Mexico. So this, you know, things are really starting to clear out across the eastern Pacific. There is one system that we're going to have to keep an eye on out here into the Pacific. This is likely to become the next typhoon. Let's put this into motion. GFS is really making this a prominent system. Look at this. Just southeast of Tokyo. This is Monday, August 29th. Now a lot can change, but you notice the overall pattern here. There's the frontal boundary along the coastline here of Japan, and this should help to deflect the system away. Now watch this. Watch what happens. Very powerful typhoon getting pretty close to Japan. Still need to keep an eye on it because it's all about the timing of this frontal boundary. See how it gets picked up into the frontal boundary there. There it is by September 2nd and then brought up towards. Oh, yeah. So definitely want to keep an eye on this as we go in time. And then you can see there's kind of a system here off the south coast of Mexico. We'll have to keep an eye on and look at this. Look at that. There it is again in the Atlantic. We could be looking at a hurricane. All right, so let's take a look at the mesoscale model, see if there's anything of potential problems, at least in the near term. You can see here across Louisiana, you will be getting quite a bit in the way of gully washers here. We got a frontal boundary with some tropical moisture pumping up here. So in the coming days, and we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms for your Friday morning. Now, look at this across the northeast. We are starting to clear things out here from that nor'easter. Some of you, unfortunately, just didn't get the rainfall out of it. I heard some of you in Cape Cod and such didn't get much, if anything, out of it. That's, uh, that's tough to really fathom here because we're just dealing with an exceptional extreme drought here. It's unbelievable. But here as we continue across the Northeast, at least we have something to show for it. A nice day to eke out for your Friday. Southeast is pretty active here. Look at these shower and thunderstorm complexes. Going to be really showery and thunderstorm complexes here across the Houston area, especially down towards Galveston. We head over towards southern Alabama and the Southeast as well. And look at this as we head throughout time. Let's see if this trend continues. It does. Look at that into the evening hour, 6 p.m., right around dinner time. It will be getting stormy around, you know, South Carolina here, Florence up towards Fayetteville and the Outer Banks. New Orleans, showers and thunderstorms. If you're down in Orlando vacationing, yep, lots of showers and thunderstorms south of Jacksonville there. And you get over towards Houston, it will be on the showery and thunderstorm side as well, continuing. And, of course, you're going to be dealing with a little bit of this tropical moisture. Let's see how much tropical moisture gets fed up into Texas with uh, Invest 99L here, whatever's going to be coming of this system. So 
yeah, the Outer Banks, we have some showers and thunderstorms. Let's back this up just a little here into the northeast. We do have a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity that does try to flare up. Let's start with Friday, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Here across central Pennsylvania, he might get some beneficial rains out here. This is 5 a.m. Saturday here, and look at that. That kind of just fizzles out. It's pretty typical here, northeast Pennsylvania, Susquehanna region of upstate New York. You're dealing with a big drought here, so look at that. See how it kind of just fizzles out there. And as we go down towards Texas, Invest 99L, let's just back this up a couple frames. Yep, look at those feeder bands just pummeling here. Coastal Texas and Louisiana. We'll get into rainfall amounts here, but these feeder bands are going to be feeding up to the northwest just like this. And as we go continue during the last few frames here, this is Saturday at 11 a.m., it is going to be a slow go of it here. Look at all that shower, all this thunderstorm activity. You're definitely going to see quite a bit in the way of rainfall here. All right, so starting off with the high-resolution Euro, this is what we have with Invest 99L. So, you know, most of the rainfall is going to occur. This is with the monsoon, by the way. That's even higher than the southeast here. But look at this. Across the southeast, that's where the stalled frontal boundary is going to continue. Really dry up here in the northeast. That's where the big hole is. So, you know what? Let's go into the southeast just momentarily here. So, we'll get in regionally. Let's go regional style here. We'll get into the south central southeast. So, let's take a look here. Take a look at this. So, let's just back this up. A lot of that's frontal boundary related. But here it is, South Texas seeing less rain than Eastern Texas and Louisiana. That's because we're going to see a frontal boundary, and this tropical moisture that comes north with Invest 99L is going to get wrung out over this region instead of Brownsville, where you barely see anything according to the Euro here. That is interesting. Now, if we switch over to, the say, the NAM 3 kilometer here, let's take a look at what the mesoscale, because we like to take a look at these models when we get really close to these systems here. So, actually, let's go with the 18Z here. See if anything's changed. Look at that. There you have it. There's pretty much agreement here. Brownsville, almost nothing. Houston, almost three, two to three inches. Look at this. So, yeah, some of these gully washers could get between two and four, maybe five inches locally up here into Texas. All right, so for the Northeast, what are we going to be dealing with? Well, most of this was from Thursday evening, so don't pay too much attention to these bands. But look at this. We have a nice weekend for the most part. This takes us through Sunday morning. So most of this is from Thursday evening for the most part. We see a little bit try to creep in here from the southeast and from the west. But, you know, it's going to be a nice weekend. It will be warmer, though. Let's take a look and see what the Euro paints here. Let's take a look here. So as we go in time, this is by Monday. So let's just back it up a few frames. Some of this occurring Sunday. So we will have a system move in by Sunday from the west here. So some of this will be shower and thunderstorm activity. Um, at this point, I don't think anything's going to be too terribly severe, but we'll continue to watch it here and see if anything comes up on the radar. I will inform you of it. But take a look at that. Yeah, we start to get more in the way of a generalized rain. This could be much, much needed here. So I wanted to show you here, take a look. Here it is, the weekend into the northeast. Now I wanted to show you, there are some thunderstorm complexes that could potentially become strong to severe here. So even though we're not going to see widespread severe, it's hard to predict this far out, but there will be some of these bow segments here. You can see it showing up on the Euro. This is beyond what the mesoscale models uh, here we're showing. But watch this as we continue in time. That weakens as it heads to the east, so it literally hits a brick wall of stable air. And by this point, we just take over with scattered convection. Let's see if it shows up. There it is. So this is going to be interesting. So it shows low pressure really starting to develop here. And in this area on Monday afternoon and evening, this is where we could start to see the potential as this system gets bogged down to the east of some isolated areas of flash flooding. So I wanted to throw that out for you. It's not going to be any widespread problems. Main stem rivers are, are going to be able to handle this with no problem, especially with, but it's going to be beneficial rain. But some of it might come down a little too fast, and that gets into New England early Tuesday morning. And then you see the low pressure. It kind of gets stuck over the northeast. So Tuesday, 
into Wednesday. Look at that. We get more showers and thunderstorms as this upper-level low kicks to the northeast. And finally, we get, well, we thought we were going to get some clearing later Wednesday and into Thursday, and there it is, finally, clearing out until you get to Friday. Another weak system starts to move through. All right, so let's take a look at the overall pattern. We start with that trough in the east, and we go through the weekend here. Take a look at this. This cutoff trough continues, and it pretty much solidifies here across the east. So we're going to see that unsettled pattern. That's probably good news for many of you in the northeast that are in this drought that we need to try to start putting a dent in here. But take a look at this. We start to get that. There's that high pressure I talked about in the tropics, that ridging. So this trough that's kind of stuck across the East Coast. So any tropical system that does try to form, it'll be interesting to see what happens. It might be brought up along the East Coast. So as we continue in time here, take a look at that. Ridging starts to win out towards the end of next week, August 26th, Friday. And look at that. We have a big old trough up here in Eastern Canada and the Gulf of Alaska. That's going to keep things pretty zonal here across Central, or, yeah, Central and North America here. Take a look at this. We have some troughiness here in the southwest, so we will have some storminess and a little bit below average temperatures. I'm sure you won't complain about that, though, and ridging is continuing up here into the northeast, and that strengthens here as we go towards Sunday, August 28th. You can see we might be back to more of the heat really pumping up out east here, so both coasts, look at that. Wow, that's a big low-pressure system up there, but you start to see Look what's happening up here in Greenland. If this bumps, if this ridge continues to build up here, we might see a situation where we start to see blocking along the U.S. East Coast, and we might see more systems stalling out. John from Rough Blackpool Sea, UK. Take a look at the rough seas here on the nice beach. Looking pretty nice out there, looking like a nice day, but yeah, the waves are really kicking up. Look at that wave action continuing. So nice captures there, John. Getting out there and enjoying it on the beach looking pretty nice but yeah that does look pretty rough to be had there taking a look at the northeast here we're going to take a look and see what that's going to go on with the heat here so friday yep we're getting into the 90s in the southern part of hudson valley parts of new jersey even up here into new england getting into the upper 80s here in parts of the susquehanna valley so it's getting rather toasty to be had here into saturday look at this yep you're hitting 90 here in syracuse 91 in albany 90 there, 90, oh, look at that. So, yeah, we're hitting the 90s here in most of these areas. we got a cool section here in the 70s in the Appalachians, and it's not too bad in the mid-80s here across much of the eastern Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. As we head towards Sunday, look what's coming. You can tell the frontal boundaries here with rain and showers here. We have another day in the 90s here in this red circle. Most areas will approach 90, even Binghamton and Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. 88 there in Syracuse. A lot of these areas will get near 90 degrees, but look at this. By Monday, we are pushing this to the east. Look at these 70s widespread across western Pennsylvania, Ohio, and look at this. By the time Tuesday rolls around, we're scouring out. Most of these lo coastal locations are into the 80s and 70s well inland. And as we get towards Wednesday, look at this. Very temperate across the northeast. The warmest location I can find is 86 in Boston, 86 down towards southern New Jersey, but that's not too bad for this time of year. All right, Upper Susquehanna River Valley from Binghamton to Scranton. Take a look Friday through Tuesday here. Friday, it's getting warmer, but it's a dry heat, 88 degrees. Look at that good sleeping weather, 52 in the morning. Saturday, you may have a chance of a shower or thunderstorm, particularly after 4 p.m., but at this point, I think most of it's going to hold off. You will be cracking 90 degrees. It'll be warm into Sunday. You have a better chance of showers and thunderstorms. Once again, I don't think it's going to be an all-day event, making it up towards 87. And Monday, more of a generalized showery conditions, a quarter to a half an inch. So this is your best chance of rain into Tuesday, clearing out you know, by the afternoon up towards the low 80s. Thanks for joining me, watching. Don't forget to share, smash the like button. Question or comment down below. Let's keep the weather conversation going here. I love to read your questions or comments. Over on my social media pages, Media Mark on Facebook, also Weather Northeastern, Hurricane Northeastern, also uh, Susquehanna Weather, and you can visit me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. Thanks for joining me.